It's time to dig in and discuss the questions on the minds of today's leaders. You are listening to The Kathleen Reeson Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership. This is where we get vulnerable, raw, and authentic about the stuff that really matters. Now, here is your host, Kathleen Reeson. Welcome to The Kathleen Reeson Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. I'm your host, Kathleen Reeson, and today we're talking all about how to build an A team. Now, this is something that I have used the skills that we're going to cover today in parenting. I've used them at work. I've used it in volunteering. Everywhere that I'm at, I want to build an A team because I want to be surrounded by people that want to play on an A team. And if you don't want to play on an A team, that's awesome. There are plenty of people that don't, but it's not the people that I want to surround myself with. And I think just knowing that, knowing the, the kind of team that you want to play on is really important. Now, if you're listening to this show, my guess is that you want to play on an A team because here's the thing, somebody that's seeking out development, like through a live radio show or a podcast, or if you're watching on the television show, however you're consuming this, if you're seeking out information like this, then most likely you are an A player. Which, or you desire to be an A player. And so what you want around you are other A players. I'm gonna give you an example of what this looks like. I've got this idea of what I wanna create and it's just a, it's an off the wall business idea. It is not gonna be my main business. I, if you know anything about me, I have lots of ideas. Some of them should never leave the parking lot or probably even my mouth. I get to really just shove them away because they're just ideas and I'm not gonna put action around them. But right now I've got one that I really think could be a great idea and it could spin off. It's not a business I want to run, but it's a business I'm happy to get started and sell to somebody that really wants to run it. One, it creates value for me. It's fun for me. And so I've got this idea that I want to spin off. And I was talking with a couple people about it. And one of these, the people, so these two other people I'm talking to, one of them is really excited, gets it right away, wants to run with the idea. The other one wants to noodle it and think about it. Well, this conversation happened a week and a half ago. I follow up with the first person who's super excited about it. He is ready to run. We are brainstorming. We are getting this idea off the ground. I check up with the third person and he's like, yeah, I mean, that'd be fun, but my schedule's pretty busy. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's cool and I wanna do the idea. And that's how he's playing and thinking. And that's totally fine, but guess what? In this idea, he is not a part of the A-team. Doesn't mean he can't be on an A-team somewhere else. It just means that when we wanna move this forward, he's not somebody I would put on the A-team. And so hear that differentiation, just because you're not on an A-team in some place, doesn't mean that you're not an A-team potential. It doesn't mean that you can't be on an A-team somewhere else. It just means when you're building the team around you, you wanna surround yourself with a players. And in the moment, if someone's not showing up as an A player, just because they have in the past, like this guy that I'm talking about, he has been an A player in the past. He's played on an A team with me. When I say A team, I mean top of the tier. He has played there with me. But in this moment, that's not how he's showing up. Cool. No judgment on that, but he's not going to be on my A team. And so I get to find somebody else to be in that role that really wants to be in that role. And that's the piece that as a leader, we get to recognize that just because somebody has traditionally shown up as an A player, it doesn't mean that they're always consistently an A player. Sometimes we want to take a break and that's okay. So if you want to form an A team, look at the people you, are, you have around you. And the, then you want to say, what is our common intention? Now I set the intention based on this idea that I had, this wacky off the wall idea of what we create. That was the intention of what, what we're creating. But oftentimes when I see people that wanna to put together A teams, they start them based on a mechanism, meaning something, something detailed that's gonna happen. So what will be the difference between an intention and a mechanism? An intention is like a vision. It's saying, this is where we're gonna get. We are gonna solve this problem. We're not talking about how we're going to solve it. We're not very specific about that. We're saying this is the problem we're going to solve. We're pulling this team together to accomplish this intention. We don't know how it's going to look. But the teams that come together because they want to make something look a certain way, they become it becomes a force, not a power. So the difference between intention and mechanism, mechanism is about a detail. 
building a team about a detail. Let's get even more granular on that. What would be an example of a mechanism, a mechanistic based team? It might be, we are going to build a software that, uh, gosh, I, it's funny that I use this as an example because I don't build software. <laughs> I don't even do a lot with software, but a very, very specific mechanistic with, team goal might be that we're going to build a very specific software to do a very specific thing. So that would be a team that is gathered to solve a very specific thing. But what I'm talking about when we're talking about an A team and we're going to pull a group of players together, we're actually talking about a higher level. So we're saying we want to solve a problem. Like we want to solve hunger. Hunger in the world, that's what we're going to solve. Or we want to solve how we can create a growth of 10% revenue. I have a client right now who is, they're putting together an A team and what they want to do is actually double their business in seven years. It's taken them 30 years to get where they are, but they want to double in the next seven years. That is a huge change. So you got to really create an A team to get there. Now I happened to step in, I invited myself to a meeting last night. I was very proud of this. I was not actually invited by someone else, but I heard this meeting was going on and I thought, wow, this sounds like a fun meeting and I invited myself. And the meeting that I invited myself to was for my kids' school. It's actually a visioning session that they're having and they are really talking about what does the vision of the school look like? This is part of a much bigger challenge that they're really figuring out. My kids go to a Catholic school, so the diocese, which would be like, Think of it as our school district. There are 12 schools within this district and they're figuring out how to merge them together, but not on an individual school basis. We'll still maintain our own individual brands, but some of the administration behind the scenes will be together. So it's gonna look a little bit different and they're figuring out what does that look like two, three, four, even five years down the road. So I was really excited they were gonna have this vision session and I went to this vision session and I thought, well, this'll be good. I'm really excited. to craft the vision. And they, they're talking to me about where they were at. The people that were around the table, there were a lot of the administrators and, and the teachers, the people that spend every day with my kids. So this is fun. I don't get to really interact with them this way. And there were a few people from the professional world. And then some of the, there were some moms there that uh, really spend a lot of time with their children. So they're, they're professionally there at home. So stay at home moms with their kids. So we had people that represented lots of different different roles within uh, the world. And so how cool is it? Because we actually get to have this process. But there was no actual facilitator for this meeting. And the people that were listed on the visioning of the who was going to be on the A team were people that really didn't have the outside perspective of having done this before. They were people that had other jobs and they just came together to decide what the this next iteration of the school was going to look like. So here I am, I hear that this is happening, I invite myself to this meeting, and I'm saying, hey, this is awesome. I am showing up because I care, I love this school, and I wanna see it succeed into the future. And they say, well, that's great. I said, and the bonus, this is what I do for a living. I really help companies with this kind of stuff. And so they thought, well, this is great too. Now you'll never believe what happened next. We're walking through the questions as we go through this process and it starts out with the big vision and what we want and then the, the mission, the core values. What are the core values of the school? They'd already outlined those, beautiful. And then we got to the SWOT analysis. And what happened was the, the, the principal, she says, okay, so we're gonna do this thing called a SWOT analysis and starts telling me what a SWOT analysis is. Now, I've done SWOT analysis for the last 20 plus years. I could do them in my sleep. Leap, but I thought it was great to listen to somebody else that doesn't, this, maybe this is the first one that they've done, talk about a SWOT analysis. So I sat there like this is the first time I'd ever heard about a SWOT analysis and this is very exciting and I asked questions. And we went through it, we went through strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats and we reworded a few things, but they really had gotten there. And so I thought it was beautiful to see from another perspective, people step into a role that they don't necessarily play. And then we got into uniques. And this is, was a word that I don't usually use the word unique in the business world. We say value proposition. We say core purpose for being, but we don't usually use the word uniques. So cool, no bias on that. I'm listening to them talk about the, that what I know as the value proposition of what they believe the school is. And I stumbled upon my first aha moment. 
And I said, wow, the people that were in this visioning meeting, they all have one thing in common. They're in the school all day, every day. And the role that I get to play is being an outsider, even though my kids go there, I'm not in it every single day. Even the ones that are the stay-at-home moms and some of the other business professionals, they had brought in because their roles, they were in the school a lot. And I'm just not in the school as much. I am as a volunteer or a parent, but I'm not in it. I don't get paid in any way. I don't get any sort of a direct association with the school. And so I get to ask questions differently. And so when you're building an A-team, think about that. Who's the person that's going to be have that critical eye and think differently. Because if you build a team of everybody that has a similar background or a similar voice or a similar style, you do not have the full part of the team. But you've got to have somebody that can think critically, that can be unbiased and, and neutral and just say, hey, yeah, I hear you. And what about this? And ask the questions because we have a different viewpoint. So when you're putting together the team, think about your team makeup. It is really important that you do not put people that have the same opinions or thoughts together because you don't want more of the same. When we're talking about transformational business strategy, we're saying we were here and we want to be there. If we just want to move a little bit at a time, awesome. Don't worry about having conflicting voices because really you're just saying, how do I get a little bit better? If you want to get a little bit better, amazing. You don't need somebody like me to come in to get a little bit better. I work with the companies that say, we are going to completely transform how we've done business up until now and how we're going to do business going forward are not the same. That's when you want to have somebody that can really think critically and differently. So when you're building your A-team, really think about what your initiative is and where you want to go. And if you're going to make that big transformational journey leap, then guess what? Build your team that way. Put some put some diversity in it. I'm not talking racial diversity or socioeconomic diversity or gender diversity. I'm talking about diversity in voice. I'm talking about diversity in styles. And so make sure that that is represented because when that happens, you're building the foundation of an A team. So really who you bring to the table is important. In the case of my school, I didn't get, again, I didn't get asked. I just volunteered because I thought it was interesting. I shouldn't even volunteer. I just showed up and I actually went to the room that I thought it was at, but nobody came to that room and I listened outside. And I, it's like th there was no intention to not include Kathleen in this, but I had to really follow the voices. And then I hopped in the room and I'm like, I'm here, people. And I laugh because I thought it was great. I have no idea what anybody else thought, but I was so excited to be there and hear this vision and this strategy because I play with 18 people. And you can play with 18 people too, but it's all about the mindset that you're carrying in there. And when you're building an A-team, know that the people that you're surrounding yourself with, those are A-team people because you say so. So build that team that's gonna be most representative of where you wanna go. So differing voices. One of the best things I ever did on Facebook, and, and think about any social media platform that you may be on, but on Facebook, the people that really, their voices, I just, I didn't see the same way as them. There tends to be, you've heard of cancel culture where we just shut off voices that we don't want to hear, but I made a conscious decision a few years ago to keep those voices around me because I wanted to remind myself that people think differently. And though I may not agree with it, I want to hear where they come from. And I want to understand why they think that way, because that's what's going to make me smarter. And when we use that same thought process for teams, that makes us all better. So when you're building your team, make sure that you have diversity of voices. We're going to go on a quick break. And when you get back, there's so much more on how to build an A-team. You are listening to The Kathleen Recent Show, Pushing the Boundaries of Leadership, here on Inspired Choices Network. We'll be back just after this break. Are you enjoying the conversations on The Kathleen Reeson Show? Kathleen speaks both in person and virtually at companies, conferences, and retreats all over the world. Learn about booking Kathleen Reeson for your next event at KathleenReeson.com. That's KathleenReeson.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. 
professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to the Kathleen Reason Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to the Kathleen Reason Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. Today, we've been talking all about how to build an A team. So one of the biggest things that you can do, and we talked about this right before break, is think about the people that you bring into the A team. Make sure that you have a diversity in there. And I don't just mean by gender or by race or by socioeconomic status. I mean by actual voice. So how they speak, where they're willing to go, what their thought process, so first the uh, diversity and mindset, all of that is really important when you're building an A team. Now, the next step, once you've got your people in place, you've invited these people to this team to solve something, before you get into what the something is, you're going to want to have some ground rules. Now, you can maybe write some of the ground rules if you're leading this team, but as a team, you get to establish the team ground rules. So some of the ground rules that I have been a part of for my teams, we have the relationships one, which is, is kind of funny. We actually establish relationships, what those look like. So we may have teams where we've got people that are married or in relationships already, and that's fine. But we actually define when we go into teams, what that looks like. Because when you work intimately with a team, it, you can be surprised what happens. You want to have this sense of comfort and confidence with the team members around you where you can be uh, intimate. And I don't mean I don't mean like any sort of sexual way. I mean, into me, you see intimacy. I mean, you want to be able to be vulnerable and authentic with them. And sometimes that can be seen in a uh, light that you don't mean for it. So you get to be clean about that. And when you set ground rules, like for example, we aren't going to enter into any relationships that don't already exist, then everybody's off the hook for that. That is just off the table. So you know that when you show up authentically and intimately for someone else, it's not because there's something else involved there. You just take that off the table and now we can just be pure and and work and have fun and focus on whatever our goal is. So that's a really key one that we bring up. And sometimes it can be awkward when we have that conversation. For example, I had a, a, a team that I put together. <laughs> they were, it was an incredible A team and it was all women. Now, obviously there are different gender preferences, but all of us were married women in heterosexual relationships. So when we put the ground rule down to exist that said we would only, uh, we would take uh, any sort of relationship that didn't already exist was no longer an issue, we laughed about it. But it didn't really matter. It was just saying that this is, this is the game we're going to play and this is how we're going to play it. And so no matter who else would come into our team, we were going to be clean about that. And so we did that and we all signed it and it was fine. That's another thing with ground rules. No matter what ground rules you establish, make sure your team physically signs the rules. You read through them and you sign them. So we have rules, I'll have a ground rule about uh, how communicate, what communication means. Now that seems like, well, duh, Kathleen, communication, pretty simple, but not everybody has the same meaning of communication, meaning we set what that means for us. If we say, as a team, we're going to meet weekly, we state that for communication. If we say we want to use email or text to communicate in between, then we state that. So we say what's ideal for us. And why is this important? Because sometimes when I'm on a team, there are people that think that because we're on the team, that means they have 24-7 access to me. And then there are people that think because we're on the team that you do not have, you still have boundaries and maybe it's working access. So between the hours of, let's say, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Well, if I'm on a team with somebody and they only want me to communicate with them between 8 and 5, but I'm saying, hey, you can communicate with me 24-7, then when I project my belief of 24-7 communication onto the other team member and it 3 a.m. in the morning when I wake up with this thought and I text it to that person 
And I'm thinking, oh no, it's cool. She'll just look at the text or he'll just look at the text when he gets up in the morning. And that's the that's how I position it. But that person actually hears their phone beep saying that they have a text and they wake up at three in the morning and now they're angry. That can all be resolved by understanding what the communication limits are and stating that from the beginning. Also think about what the relationship looks like. Are we meeting in person? Are we via Zoom? Are we hybrid? What does that look like? So we're really establishing what the ground rules are for the team. We talk about feedback. I do include feedback as a ground rule for teams because I, just as a whole, I don't believe that in the world we understand how to give and text on feedback. Like it, it's just not a thing that we really get because the context of feedback is really about how, I mean, it's a gift. Think about like a window, for example. Okay, so you've got the window and the window sill like around the window, that's your box. And then you've got the window within it. That's your actual, the guts, okay? So the box, the window and the window sill, that's your context. That is actually saying why you would give feedback. So you're, we're giving feedback because it's actually a gift. It's one of the most loving things we can do for people. But the actual window, that's your content. That's the feedback that you're giving. So why we give it and the, and what it is that we're actually giving, very different things. But I often think that as a, an A team, we have to be able, to, well, I know we have to be able to give feedback openly and freely, which means whenever it comes up, we are delivering it. But oftentimes we've missed the context of feedback setting, meaning the ground rule of saying, hey, this team is based on feedback. So if you have feedback, then the other person gets to be open to receiving it. Even if you don't want to, you get to be open to it. And so when you set that as a ground rule, you're setting a priority for feedback to be delivered. I can't tell you how many times I've been with teams and that somebody's talking to somebody else about feedback that they want to give an entirely other person. And that person has no idea because they're not talking together. They're talking about each other but not with each other. And so when that happens, you have a team that's in the spiral of death. The difference between an A team and that team is that an A team gives feedback to each other openly and freely. And so set that as a ground rule that in this team, we give feedback openly and freely. Not everybody understands what feedback is. So again, set the context for it, saying we give feedback openly and freely, and then here's how we give feedback. And so I've got a process on how we give feedback so that we create that A team, but it is, it's really listening to what somebody says. It's asking them, do you understand what I'm saying? We've actually done shows on feedback. So you can go back through the shows and listen to one that's on delivering feedback. It'll give you directions on actually how to give feedback, but that is something I would structure into your ground rules. So once you've got your ground rules established, you've got the people in place, you've got your ground rules established, your team has signed off for that on them. Now what you've got is a bunch of people that understand how you're going to play the game. You set the context for what this game is. And let's be clear, everything that we're up to is a game. Yes, like not a board game, right? Like Monopoly or Sorry or Trouble. Those are all games too. Those are literal games. But everything that we're up to in this world is a game. And we're either winning at it or we're losing. And an A team wants to win. I want to win. I want to win all the time. Now, I realize that in life, there's failures, and that's okay. And even when we're failing, hey, guess what? We're still winning. And so you can say that all you want, but an A-team's mentality is, I want to win. And so we've got to understand what winning looks like. Okay, we've got to paint the picture. An A-team knows the scorecard. They know what winning looks like because it is a game that we're playing. And so be very clear with your team on what winning is looks like. If we are solving a big problem, we're very clear on what the problem is and we'll know when we solve it. Okay. We don't know what the problem is and we've got to know when we solve it. That's the scorecard. And so we refer to that as what is our intention. And in a, an A team keeps the intention at the forefront. It's very important that you've got the intention at the forefront, meaning everything that we do is about this intention, nothing else. It's all about driving towards that intention because when we can get that crystal clear about what we're up to, then guess what? There is no more second guessing. It's so clear when you know your intention, where you're headed. I'm working with a company right now 
and we are actually in the strategic planning sessions right now. We are going through to understand very clearly where this company gets to head for the next three years. We get to understand that this is what we're going to create. And when we get there, we are, we are dictating right now, we are coming up with how we'll know when we get there. And that's how clear you can play, knowing exactly what the scorecard is. How will we know when we got there? So it's no different than in football or baseball, like soccer. Okay, my, my youngest is playing soccer. You better believe when his team walks off the field, they know who won and they know who lost. And I can feed them the line all day long about, hey, when you lose, it's okay because you're practicing and guess what? You're just going to get better. Like he gets that. They get that inherently. But guess what? They want to win because as human beings, we want to win. And just like in youth sports where we've combined it, we've brought these groups of kids together, we've combined them with one goal, win. Now, if you don't win, it's not like you suck. It just means we're opportunities to grow, but they want to win because we teach at a young age that we like to win. In life, we want to win. It's all a game, so we want to win. So the best way to win is to know what winning looks like. Now, I'm emphasizing this point because you wouldn't believe how many times teams get put together, but they don't really know what the goal is. I was just reading a statistic from a company that said that 90% of direction that a client gives to, in this case, it was for an advertising agency, 90% of the, the direction that a client gives to an advertising agency is inaccurate. 90%. I mean, can you believe that? That number is so high. But the reason for it is what's really important. It's because the client doesn't have all of their stuff together. They don't have their strategy together. So now they're asking another company to make a difference in, the, in their company based on inaccurate information. I mean, can you believe that? Because when that happens, the te neither team can win. So we're setting these companies up for failure. And then when the agency doesn't perform the way that you want them to, we are blown away as the client. Well, why didn't they perform? Well, it's clearly not because we only gave them 10% accurate information. That's not the problem. When in fact, that is exactly the problem. And so what we get to create is the scorecard to know how we're winning. When you want an A team, we want to win, just tell us how to win and then we'll figure it out. Because if you combine the people together that want to win, that have the skill sets to win, that are diverse, and now you put a scorecard in front of them, you know they know the ground rules, and now you say go, they are off and running. But just like in a horse race, you want to guide them so that they're actually going towards the finish line. You don't want them just running everywhere. And if you don't have a very clear finish line, then they can't run together. Then I don't know what you would have. It'd be like a pinata that burst open. You just have stuff everywhere. But what we want is we want everybody running in the same direction. And that means we have a clear intention. So that is really, really important. Now, when you've got your team and you've got that diverse voice that we talked about, you've established your ground rules and you're all running together, you got the formula for an A team and you get to start. And wouldn't it be beautiful if that was it? If just running the A team was about establishing the team and setting the ground rules and moving forward. But inherently, just like any other team, you are going to have hiccups. And so as the leader of the A team, here's the thing I can tell you. In an A team, there is no one leader. Even if you pulled the team together and you're the ultimate leader of the team in an A team, everyone is the leader. Now, doesn't that get complex? Of course it does. And that's why I'm going to go on a quick break. <laughs> and when we get back, we'll dig in even more because I'm going to leave you with that moment of everyone's the leader. Figure that one out. We'll be back here in just a second. You'll see the Kathleen Reeson show, pushing the boundaries of leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. Talk to you in just a second. Are you enjoying the conversations on The Kathleen Reeson Show? Kathleen speaks both in person and virtually at companies, conferences, and retreats all over the world. Learn about booking Kathleen Reeson for your next event at KathleenReeson.com. That's KathleenReeson.com.
How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Welcome back to The Kathleen Reason Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to The Kathleen Reeson Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. We've been talking all today about how to build an A team. Now, right before the break, I threw you for a curveball. And I said on an A team, there is not one leader, everyone's the leader, even if you are the leader. And so this is one of the hardest things that I have found, this hardest concepts to understand on a team. When we really want to build an A team, we get to be one of the leaders and not the leader. So I was just talking with a friend who's on his own A team. And he said one of the biggest challenges for him is that somebody, he set up a list. So he took some initiative on this team and created something for the team. And so he became the perceived senior leader of the team. And so one of the other members of the team called him up and told him about some of the challenges that she was having with this team. And he said, are you open to feedback? And she says, yeah, of course, because that was one of the ground rules. And he said, why do you think that I am the one leader of this team? And she said, well, <coughs> excuse me, well, you set up this, whatever the sheet was. And he says, yep. And you could have too. And in this team, and we're playing on an A team, we're all leaders. There is not one above the other. And this is the difference, the real big difference to me between an A team and just a team. In a team, there is a leader that tells other people to do things or assigns tasks and then comes back, the team comes back together and reports on their tasks. It's more like a group. But on an A team, everyone's the leader. And so if I see something that gets to be done, I either do it or I talk with the team to figure out where, how it gets to be done. I'm not waiting for somebody else to figure that out. And oftentimes the difference between an A team and any other team or group is that this is inherently talked about and discussed and said, hey, the way that we're gonna play is that we all are the senior leaders here. We all have the opportunity to lead this team. We all get to take this team across the finish line and we all are responsible for that. We are linking arms and running together. There is not one of us that is leading further. There is no baton that we're carrying at a higher level. We are all crossing the finish line together. We are literally linking arms and running together. And so that's the difference. When an A team really thinks about it, there is no credit. There is no, well, she did that or I get the credit for it. It's the team's credit. We as a team get the credit. And that may mean that in, in one win where we had with a team, I didn't actually do anything. But the next win that happens, maybe I did. But we all share the credit because it's not about one individual person. I was listening to a podcast the other day. And then the, the context of the pod podcast was talking about leadership development. And it said one of the biggest misnomers in, in an A team is that we, we, we talk about leadership development as a team, but people have taken parts of that and, and made it as an individual leadership piece. So saying I am a great individual higher performer when I can win on the team, but nobody else wins. But here's the thing about an A team and hear this loud and clear. Nobody wins on an A team until everybody wins, which means we all meet our goals. Even the person, get this, even the person that doesn't do much, their role is very different. Have you ever had somebody on a team that you think, 
oh, they're not pulling their weight. I wish we could just kick them off the team. I mean, I've, I've been on teams like that before. And I realized that in the past, it, it, I may have said it's somebody else's responsibility to lift them up or to fire them off the team. It, it's somebody else that gets to do that. But in an A team, it's all of us that get to go ignite the fire of that person that gets to go get that person to get up and get moving. And it's us as a team that may decide that at some point mm, that person isn't on the team anymore, if that's the case. But if somebody doesn't win and somebody leaves the team, it's all of us that are bearing that burden, not one person. So remember in a team or a group, we're often pointing fingers or blaming. But when we do that, we put ourselves into a victim position like it's somebody else's fault. Somebody else is to blame. But that's not being responsible. In an A team, we are responsible. In an A team, we are saying that we are getting to that finish line no matter what. And we're all working together because we committed to in our ground rules. One of the ground rules that I put in is exactly what we said earlier. Nobody wins until everybody wins. Now that is not what we think of in society. In society, it's you, it's, it's, it's like me. It's me, mine, and it's about me reaching my goal. But that doesn't work. We get to work together in an A team. In an A team, there aren't individuals. When you step onto an A team, it is no longer about you. You aren't even seen, you are only team. So instead of, let's say you have a team of five people, there are no more five people. It is just one team. And you think about it that way. You may have five subsets, five sub goals, and each one of those may belong to a person on the team, but the team is not complete until all five are complete. Now, as somebody who's a high performer, that can often be challenging to hop onto a team with somebody that doesn't necessarily want to play at the same level that I do. But my job is to light them up and get them to play at their highest potential level because every single person has a value. And my job is to understand the value of that person and how that can work with all of the other values on the team so that we can run as fast as we can and reach our goal and complete the scorecard as a W. That is the whole goal of an A team. We are no longer individuals. We are only team. We have given up individual when we go into an A team. So there's prices for everything in life. There are consequences for our choices. And when you choose to step onto an A team, you are leaving behind your individuality and stepping into team. Not everybody wants that and that's okay. And if you don't want that, you're not ready for that. Don't get on the A team. Go play in a group. Go play by yourself. But I'll tell you what, and here's something, and I think we've missed it somewhere along the lines and didn't necessarily talk about it when I went to business school. I don't know if they are now, but here's the thing, and I'm going to say it loud and clear. What I'm saying is that the ranks of leadership as you progress, when you are starting out, you are individual contributor and you can be a high performer. And as you grow, you can continue into high performer, individual contributor. But then you come to a crossroads. And you're either going to continue as an individual performer and, a, and an individual contributor, a high performer, but you're going to cap out. And then you're going to look a little stagnant because there's really nowhere else to go. If you want to go even further, then you get to join the ranks that look different. So you either stay where you're at and have nominal growth, and that's fine. There is no judgment on that. You can do that until the day you decide to retire. But there is another option. And this is where you're at a crossroads. The other option is no longer about individual contributors. It's about how we play together as a team. And it's a commitment to building teams. And if that is what you're doing, you're committed to playing an A game, there is a lot of opportunity for you because there is so much need for senior leadership that understands how to develop others. And I think we're at a real gap because where do you actually learn this? There might be some classes that you can take, maybe at the community college, maybe at your university. Maybe there are companies that are offering them in your area. There are certainly things online. But there is nothing that you really learn how to actually play in an A team 
unless you take yourself on, get a coach, and you are all in, or you just happen to have an incredible mentor that's going to put you on a team and that's going to let you fail and win. And probably at the same time, all at once. And how uncomfortable is that? But that is so needed because once we get to a point, we don't have enough senior leaders that are willing to do that, to take themselves on and to step into seeing other people's greatness and saying, hey, guess what? Nobody wins until everybody wins. And while I'm the senior leader on this team, we're all the senior leaders in this team. And if you lose, I lose. And if I win, you win. But there is no I win, you lose, or you win, I lose. That doesn't exist anymore. And that's a price that you pay. Now, here's the unfortunate thing. You hear that the CEO of the company, if something happens down at the bottom level, you don't think the CEO has responsibility for that? That's a mentality that goes around. You may not have it, but that's a mentality that, well, the CEO is up in their castle with their rich bucks making all this money, but the little man down below isn't. Now, does that happen in business? Sometimes, sure. But in an A team, that's not what's happening because the hierarchy doesn't work that way. On an A team, it's a flat because I don't win until my entire team wins. When you're talking about an A team, when you think about performance compensation, a large part of that performance compensation should be based on the performance of the team. Now, I'm not saying there can't be an individual component to that, but really think about how you compensate the team. If you're saying play as an A team, then compensate them that way because that's going to be really important. Can't tell you how many times I see people put together on a team and there are people with lots of different pay grades on that team. And then they're wondering why there's controversy on there and why voices don't want to be heard. Because do you think that I, if I've got, if I've got my boss who's, or my boss's boss on a team with me, do you think I'm going to deliver that honest feedback? Probably not. I don't have as much skin in the game as the boss's boss. And if I say something that might irritate that person, will I get fired? I mean, this is the reality of what happens when we don't create the A teams with the structure that we've described. And so you can do that by flattening out the A team and saying, we don't win till everybody wins. Everybody's got a skill set here and I want to hear everybody's voice because we aren't going to get to this objective unless we all play all in. And you were all put on this team because you each have a skill set that is exactly what we need. When you say that to a team and you really mean it, what you're doing is empowering each of the players to play to their fullest. And that is one of the coolest things that can happen. And if you are fortunate enough to be able to play on a team like that, I, that is, there's nothing else like it. Because outside of sports and a few select businesses, we don't play like that in the world, but we could. Think about what it would be like if we did. Think about what we could create. What opportunities would arise? How much fun we could have? I mean, those are fun teams to be on. I'm all about building A teams. And if this is something that you're interested in and you want to know how to build an A team for your company, let me know. Let's talk through it. My email is Kathleen at KathleenReason.com. Very easy to get a hold of. Let me know. Just send me an email, subject line, A team. I'll know what you're talking about. I'll know you've heard this show and that you want to build an A team. Because as the senior leader, there are some things that you can do. I can send you over some ground rules and what they can look like. We can talk about the structure and having to have diversity of voices and how you can put that together. Really, really cool when it works out. I've also seen A teams fail. And where they fail is typically in the ground rules and in the execution of the ground rules. In theory, the A teams are great. They put together the right people, they've got the ground rules in place but then they don't actually have the accountability with each other to hold those crown rules. And typically that starts with a leader. Remember the original leader holding the context. So remember the windowsill that we're talking about, reminding this is what we're creating and reminding of the ground rules and holding the accountability. But if you've never been, had somebody model that for you, that can be tough to then show up like that. And so Having somebody like me that can support you or anybody that understands really what it takes to run an A-team, what you're doing is holding the context for the A-team. Holding the context for it so that it gets to be created. 
It's the best thing you'll ever do when it's executed correctly. Take my word for it. Ask anybody else who's been on an A-team. It's one of the one of the best experiences you'll ever have. I look back on my A-team experiences and I think those were the best. They were the most fun. They were the ones where we tackled the biggest projects, where we went the furthest in the shortest amount of time, where we thought, gosh, there's no way we're going to be able to create what we created. But I'll tell you what, an A-team has never been created with a party of one. It just doesn't happen that way. It's not a team. You can't have a team of one person. It's always multiple people, but you bring them together and you have a really great time, but you got a solid intention. You give each other feedback and you go all together, linking arms, crossing the finish line. That's a powerful A-team. Now we're going to go on a quick break and when we get back, we'll wrap all of this up. You're listening to The Kathleen Reeson Show, Pushing the Boundaries of Leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. Talk to you in just a second. Are you enjoying the conversations on The Kathleen Reeson Show? Kathleen speaks both in person and virtually at companies, conferences, and retreats all over the world. Learn about booking Kathleen Reeson for your next event at KathleenReeson.com. That's KathleenReeson.com. Welcome back to The Kathleen Reeson Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to the Kathleen Reeson Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership here on Inspired Choices Network. Today, we've been talking all about how to build an A team. And before we wrap up this show, what I want to talk to you about is actually a show that we're doing in a couple weeks because I would love your feedback. We are doing a show on Halloween called Leadership Horror Stories. We're actually going to share some of the horror stories that either as a leader you've experienced or maybe as a teammate that you've experienced from a leader. So if you have something, you can submit it anonymously to me. Just email me over Kathleen at KathleenReason.com. I will not state your name or your company, so, but tell me what happened. So I've got a couple different examples and I, I'll, sh uh, well, I'll share one with you right now just to highlight because we'll dig in more. I don't want to give the big reveal away. But I was talking with a friend the other day and she was telling me about uh, when she had to hire her, well, she, she, her replacement had been hired. She didn't realize it was her replacement right away, but then she got fired right after the replacement said yes, but they didn't let her go right away. They said, hey, we'd like you to stay on for three months and train your replacement who just started. I mean, can you even imagine Shocker, it didn't go well. And when the new person found out about it, realized, I don't want to be here. I had another friend who was super excited to start at a company. So she interviews with one of the, her, well, her future boss, who was the president of the company. Well, in this company, there were two presidents. And she didn't actually interview with the other president. Well, she started at the company. Six months later, it was not a fit. What was really happening, the first president, her boss was fine. But this other president who she didn't interview with was horrible, couldn't make a decision. Every time I made a decision, it was in conflict with something else that they had said. And there was back and forth, back and forth, and they could never get any traction. And so she felt like she was wasting her time. So she goes to her first boss and she says, I don't really understand. Why didn't you have me interview with this first president beforehand, this other president, when I first come here? You know what the boss said? She says, no joke, I can't make this stuff up. She says, well, if you would have interviewed with him, you wouldn't have come to work here. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's funny. And you will be shocked to hear that the president, the second one, ended up quitting. <laughs> she ended up, she lasted about six more months. And then she got so frustrated that she said, I can't work with this other president anymore, leaves. And then there was only one president left. There's a big company in my town right now who has two presidents. I find this hilarious. What they're doing, now, if you ask the, the CEO, these are just the presidents, there's a CEO above them. So there's a CEO and two presidents. Well, what really happened is the CEO couldn't decide which one of them to hire for his role because it's a succession planning game right now. He's going to resign or he has officially resigned as CEO, but it's like two years from now. And so these two presidents are in these roles because he pitted them against each other. And he says, whichever one outperforms the other, that's the one who gets my role. So for two years, they're playing a game to pit each other, knowing that one of them will not be at the company going forward. I mean, what in the world? Why would you think about a toxic culture? That is the very definition of what a toxic culture is. 
but yes, this is real and it's happening. So if you've got a horror story, if you say, oh, but Kathleen, listen to this, I can top that. I want to hear it. Again, just like that, I'm not going to reveal who you are or who your company is for sake of confidentiality, unless you want me to, but let me know. Send me an email, Kathleen at KathleenReeson.com, subject line, Halloween horror stories. If you don't remember that subject line, totally fine. Just say, hi, Kathleen, but let me know what your horror story is. We are going to have the most fun on that day, just talking about horror stories of leadership. And why do we do this? Because I believe that we can learn <laughs> from all of these. It's stuff that we might think, hey, you know what? Two presidents, that sounds great. Like, why not? We'd have double the leadership. Hmm. Yeah, maybe not. Think about how this didn't play out because when we can learn from these, then we can grow. And But we don't have to make the mistakes that other people made. We can just learn from them. And so I find this a beautiful and funny way to learn tough lessons. So that's why we're doing Halloween Horror Stories on Halloween. So we are coming up. Get those to me soon. Kathleen at KathleenReason.com. Now, back to today's show how to build an A team. We talked about the people, make sure you have a diversity of voices on your team, diversity of mindset, people who think differently, because if you have a bunch of the same, you're not gonna transform your company. You're just gonna move forward, probably at a slow pace. But if you really, really wanna grow your company, that is awesome. But you get to do it with a diversity of voices. Make sure that you've got ground rules in place so that you know what game you're playing. Make sure that you have open feedback and consistent feedback. Make sure that people know the intention of the game that they're playing. And then make sure that when hiccups come up, that you are coaching and supporting your team along the way, because there's not just one leader, everybody gets to be a leader. So when you're thinking about an A-team, create one. They're a lot of fun. But even as a senior leader, it's not about your individuality anymore. It's about A-team. No one wins unless everyone wins. So really important distinction of a high performing team versus just a team or a group. Now next week, we have one more show before the leadership horror stories. Next week, we're talking about building self awareness as a senior leader. So if you are a senior leader, self awareness is so important, because you got to know what's happening around you in order to guide others, you've got to be able to pick up on the little nuances that other people are stating. You got to be able to flex into their style, which means you've got to be able to meet somebody where they're at versus just showing up as how you are. So it's really easy to show up as how you are. And that's more of an individual characteristic. But once you step into a senior leadership role, you've got to meet other people where they are. And so there's a big distinction there. Okay. There's a big difference. And that's what we're talking about next week. So we've got all kinds of fun stuff lined up for you. Uh, every week I come with topics that have to do with executive leadership, senior level leadership, conversations and questions that are going on. If you think of other questions or conversations that you have that you're wondering about, just let me know. Again, you can shoot me a note on what those might be. But right now, your homework is to think about the team around you. Would you call it an A team? If it is, yay, that's so exciting. Maybe there's a tip today that you can take and implement in with your team. If you've got a team or a group, or maybe you have a bunch of people that are running individually, but you don't actually have them working together as a team, think about what we talked about today. Does your team have a goal? Do you have ground rules? Are they open and honest with each other? How do you communicate? All those things are really important as you're putting together your team. So think about where your growth opportunities are. And if you have any questions, just reach out to me. This is the stuff that lights me up and keeps me moving. So definitely reach out with any questions that you might have. So this is Kathleen Reeson and how to build an A team with my message for you today. But remember, horror stories. I can't make this stuff up, you guys. I got all kinds of stories that people have sent in. So that's what I'm going to leave at the very last minute today is Think about the things that have happened to you that made you go, uh, can't believe that just happened. Or maybe you heard it from a friend or you've got a friend that wants to tell a story, send those in because that is going to be one of my favorite shows of the year. I'm already setting up as my all time favorite. So make sure you listen in. You can listen in on the live radio show. You can even come play with us there, or you can do it through the podcast or through the television app. So we've got all kinds of ways for you to listen. Thank you so much for coming today. We'll see you later. Thank you for listening to The Kathleen Reeson Show, pushing the boundaries of leadership. 
Kathleen Reeson will return next Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Have a great week.